Conventional fertilizers and step programs have been used for many years now, and for good reason. They work great at keeping the lawn green. Fertilizer gets the plant food to the root system quickly. The granules break down with water, go through the soil surface, and are immediately available for the plant. They eat, grow, get green, instant gratification for the lawn. Problem being is, the roots can only take in a small amount of what's offered to them at a time, and then the remaining chemicals continue to go through the soil and back into our natural water system. So every time you fertilize, the grass plant quickly sucks in whatever food it can, creating rapid shoot growth, and then it slows down after the chemicals pass. There's no reason the roots have to go anywhere to find their food. It's available as soon as it goes through the soil surface, and it will be again the next time you fertilize. That's why 10 days later, you're mowing your butt off for the next month just trying to keep up with it among a list of whole other problems that it creates, which we'll talk about. So the bottom line is, with conventional step programs, you're just directly feeding the plant and not the soil, which obviously isn't what nature intended. The natural way a lawn grows is more complex, yet it's easier for the plant and then eventually you. Let's go to our grass system. The sun is out and now lawn, like all of us, love it. Through photosynthesis, carbohydrates and proteins are carried throughout the plant, which gets secreted out through the roots as exudates. Those exudates attract bacteria and fungi which live in healthy soil. As the plant roots grow, the excess root tissue along with organic matter feed the bacteria and fungi. And all of this fun stuff happens around one-tenth of an inch surrounding the roots called the rhizosphere. Oh, what happy days these must be for the bacteria and fungi with all that free food, if life was only that simple. Unfortunately for them, everything in nature has a predator. And theirs, in this case, would be bigger microbes called protozoa and nematodes. They eat the bacteria along with the fungi, and what they excrete is taken up by the plants as nutrients. Pretty simple way to feed a plant, isn't it? It gets its nutrients without the help from you or I. It's even more amazing when you realize there are billions of microbes and just a tiny amount of healthy soil. It's a busy place. So the kill or be killed saga continues in the soil. Protozoa and nematodes are then eaten by anthropods, which are like insects and spiders, and they in turn are eaten by either each other or by larger anthropods along with birds, snakes, and other animals. All this decaying and excretion feed the plant. The whole process we've been talking about is called the soil food web. All the members of the web are continuously looking for carbon to consume, which is what they and organic matter are made up of. So why does this all happen? Because the plant needs the nutrients. The plant controls what kind and how many exudates based on its needs. The soil food web is an amazing natural source of nutrition for our lawns, but it also has many other functions as well. It cycles minerals and nutrients, decomposes organic matter, and it enables good soil structure. So you can see why it's important to our lawn's health. Just important to know is that the continued use of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides severely disrupt the soil food web and soil health in general. That's why synthetic chemicals have to be applied several times a year to keep a lawn green because it doesn't have its natural food source anymore. It's dependent on the chemicals. Yeah, your lawn's a junkie. So, not only are the chemicals hurting the food source for the plants, it's also ruining the soil structure. Healthy soil contains around 25% air, 25% water, 45% mineral, and 5% organic matter. Good biology in the soil helps maintain that structure. Earthworms and the other participants in the web move around, leaving a slimy residue on the soil particles that in turn bind the soil particles together, creating what is called aggregates. You know, when you grab a handful of good loom, it forms a wall. Well, that's why you're able to do it. So while this eating each other frenzy continues, earthworms and the other participants create small tunnels in the soil, allowing air, water, and nutrients to pass through something very important to the health of the grass and its root system. You see, when the soil has these tunnels, the rain soaks in and pushes all the stale air out, allowing fresh, clean air to circulate back in, creating an aerobic, healthy environment. Using conventional fertilizers disrupts that whole process. If you were an earthworm, would you stay around if somebody dumped salt and petroleum byproducts on you on a regular basis? Of course not. A large earthworm population is a strong indicator of a healthy, living soil.